This is Gil, and today is the 3rd of May 2011. And Gil, in my opinion, and according to quantum evaluation and clinical science and history of chewing on lead about um, 10 days ago um, on a, an old um, butter urn, uh, antique butter urn, has had severe heavy metal poisoning and was fitting two or three days ago also vomiting repeatedly, not eating and not vocalising and then developed what we call clenched foot syndrome and he's walking around on his heels or hocks and is very still very unsteady on his feet a bit difficult on the grass but that gives you an idea of how he's getting along Pretty old rugged journey at the moment, and he's not responding as quickly as I would hope, or hasn't been responding as quickly as I would hope to um, to a lot of treatment. But um, this is perhaps one of the more important ones: is getting some grit into him so that if there is any remaining metal in his gizzard, that it's um, uh, replaced by sand grit and then it's helped to pass through so um, um, actually him getting into some sand grit like this is wonderful natural medicine and um, he's got a wing clip so this is one benefit from having a wing clip there's not many but one benefit is that I can bring him out here on the on the lawn and um, let him poke around where a bandicoot's been digging Notice his clenched foot here. Anyway, heavy metal poisoning is one of the most common diseases that I encounter in pet and cage birds. There are many sources of heavy metal poisoning. Uh, rusty bells, uh, rusty chrome frames for stainless steel food dishes, rusty chains um, that are galvanised, copper tie wire, peeling paint and uh, there are many many other sources but they're some of the common ones and uh, the signs of heavy metal poisoning can vary from lethargy from um, uh, slow emptying crop with secondary crop infections often the crop infections are diagnosed but the underlying heavy metal poisoning diagnosis is missed in my experience um, when I get second and third and fourth opinions um, about what's going on. Often the kidneys are affected and they pass uh, more urine than usual. They can develop uh, paralysis signs, they can develop weakness and incoordination signs. They can be fitting like this birdie was um, three or four days ago. They often um, vomit uh, as this bird was two or three days ago and there are various ways of managing these birdies the standard treatment at the time at this time is um, calcium ETTA injections uh, there are other drugs that can be used um, calcium EDTA um, supporting or symptomatic treatment for the vomiting with um, meclopramide or what used to be called Maxilon Sometimes anti-inflammatories are used. Uh, tube feeding with metamucil and sand grit and various nutrients to support health and well-being is another aspect of what can be done. And if the bird is able to eat grit like this, this is great. This is just soil, but in amongst it there's sand grit, and he's um, eating that, and I'm very happy for him to be doing so. And um, the more of that he eats, the better within reason at the moment. Another form of management is quantum evaluation and adjustments and this little birdie is also receiving that form of management and health support and well-being support remotely. But, um, that 
can be um, interfered with by radiation and by entity attachment and we have found that this bird also uh, for one reason or other did have entity attachment and we have cleared that using scientific dowsing methods and through intent and he's certainly looking brighter than he did two days ago but the main problem now is the, um, the clenched feet and the fact that he's still walking on his heels or hocks and not able to stand up on his feet and he is uh, not able to unclench his feet voluntarily. So um, we're doing physiotherapy each day and I'll see how he's going. I'll continue to tube feed him a bit longer and he'll get a, he's continuing on injections twice a day at the present stage. This little birdie's name's Gil and he normally talks extremely well and when he sees an old person he starts coughing and when he sees a young person he starts uh, mimicking a young person's voice, a child's voice and he's got a great repertoire according to his owner Carol. So he's a very very special and dearly loved birdie. This is great, getting him outdoor. This is part of what I call holistic health management. As a holistic avian vet, I like to try and get the opportunity for birdies to do what they would do in nature. And he's, um, it's interesting that he's got plenty of little fresh green power grass seeds, which they normally love, and he's got access to Kai Kuyu runners here that they normally love, but right at the moment uh, his priority is to eat soil. Very interesting. Even though he's been given mineral supplements by crop tube. So um, I think he knows what's best for him. Uh, we will see. Anyway, we'll do a, a, a follow-up video in a few days for a bit of luck and hopefully we will have lots of good news for you. This is Dr. Ross Perry, drrossperry.com.au, drrossperry.com, cockatoohealth.com, many other health.com sites for other species of birds, budgie health, cockatiels health, canaries health. You'll find me in very many places if you are uh, here to search YouTube Dr. Ross Perry, spelt D O C T O R, as well as just D R R O -S, S P E W -R, R Y. Enjoy the video and enjoy many more on YouTube Dr. Ross Perry. Thank you.